Hi everyone, welcome back to Dev Doge Academy and welcome back to Introduction to Programming Using Java. So continuing our journey, I'm going to open here, uh, not command prompt, but IntelliJ Community Edition. Uh, I'm going to open at least for two or three more videos until we all get used to, to the interface. A quick recap, we have here our first class. This class was created by right clicking here on SRC and then new Java class. We gave a name that is a convention that the first letter must be capital for each word when declaring classes. Uh, that is also a convention for methods, but we are not going to get there yet. And basically here we have a class, a method. This method is the main entry point. Basically this main entry point is what we are telling the JVM, hey, if you are going to start my algorithm, this is where you, are, you, you should start uh, executing. And then we are telling here for the computer, hey, I would like you to print these methods to the console. And then we have two options to execute. We can either click here or we can just press Ctrl Shift F10, as you can see down here, and we get the message back in the console, not the terminal. This is the console, as you can see here, and this is the terminal. So they are two different uh, things. Okay, uh, I'm closing here. Now, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about variables. So to understand variables, you need to understand a little bit about memory. I hope you did watch the videos. I asked you kindly to watch it because now I'm just going to go over it kind of just uh, about what we need for this, this class. Let's go back to draw.io and what we are going to do here is basically draw a nice memory. So you know that your computer has memory and these days memory is pretty cheap compared to 20 years ago. So you don't have to worry that much about what you are doing in memory unless you are working with like billions of data. Uh, for us, actually, we are now never going to reach the, the maximum amount of memory with our algorithms but you don't have to worry that much about memory these days but what you need to understand and um, is like this is your entire memory so let's say you can have here like four gigabytes eight gigabytes and the operating system is the one managing this memory but when we are creating software it doesn't mean that you are not creating you are not connecting to this memory so when you create software you are going to interact with this memory as a software developer, you're going to write something, telling the computer, hey, I would like you to store something in memory. And then the JVM will understand what you said because you are going to generate a bytecode. And then the JVM, JVM will tell the operating system, okay, uh, we need you to store this here. So basically what you need to know is operating system is going to handle the whole memory, is the one responsible for managing it. That's kind of the name operating system. And then the software that we're going to develop is going to use the memory. So we have some part of it. We never get like 100% of the memory available. The operating system will always save some part for it. So if we had to draw something, say, hey, okay, this part um, right here, actually I would like to have this like this. So we can say, for example, okay, so this part right here, that's not that straight. So the operating system is getting this part and for everything else, for every program in your computer, you are going to use the rest of it. Okay, so you share this with your, for example, your browser, with any games and your program that you are going to develop, your algorithm will be part of this. Okay, so what we need to understand, the, the main thing here is that every time you are developing software and you create like a variable, a variable is nothing more than a space in memory. So you are telling the operating system, hey, I would like to create like a tiny little space here. And this space, I'm going to use to store something. Now, what is this something? It can be like several different things. But for now, we are going to work with what we call primitive types. So in Java, we have what we call reference types. And we have what we call uh, primitive types. So in this course, we're basically going to work with primitives. Uh, and then in Java 1 for all, you are going to understand what is object and what is like a reference type. But basically, when we talk about primitives, uh, we are talking about simple data, for example, numbers. So most of the primitives, they are numbers and they are just stored. So for example, if we say, hey, I would like to store an age, an age is just a number. So we can start here like 20. So this is like a simple value that is, is stored in memory. So in Java, we have eight primitive types. So you can come here to any search engine uh, and then you can type Java data 
types. So why do we need uh, data types? Java is like a strongly typed language. It means that it will give uh, you the choice of different types. You must have one type for everything that we're going to do in Java, uh, allocating variables, you need to tell what is the type of that variable. There are some languages where they are more flexible and basically just say, hey, I just want you to allocate one space in memory from your operating system. But in Java, you have to say, hey, I would like you to allocate one space in memory, but I also want you to make sure, for example, that this is an integer. So I will only accept numbers, like whole numbers here in this space. So this is basically, uh, it's not the operating system, but basically this is the Java, the Java taking care of it. So in Java, everything is typed. Uh, it's like what we say, uh, strongly typed language. And some languages just say, hey, I just want to I space in memory and then I'm going to put whatever I want there and then the developer should be careful with what is going on in there. Okay, so in Java we have eight uh, data types. So I can Google it, uh, I could write it for you, but I just want to show you here uh, what we have available. For example, we have these types. We have byte, short, int, long, float, double, boolean, and character, char. The difference between each one of these types, for example, these, 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 except boolean and char, they are all numeric values. They store numbers. And the difference between them is the size. So this is pretty important. For example, uh, you probably watched the videos, you understand that everything uh, when we are talking about computers is bits, basically zeros and ones. And then when we store something, even though we store like the number 20, we are not storing the number 20 itself. For the computer, they are going to store the bits that are going to represent the number 20. So if you open the calculator and you come here to programmer, for example, uh, like I have selected, and you type here the decimal 20, the, basically the computer is going to understand this in memory. So the computer will not understand the 20, but it's going to understand zeros and ones. And the combination of these zeros and ones, they are going to uh, be stored there. So when I say, hey, I can only store one byte, it means eight bits. And then eight bit, if we want to convert this to number, can only represent minus 128 to 127. So it means that you are telling, hey, this tiny space in memory here, if I tell Java, hey, I want to have this guy as byte, Java will not let you, for example, store 128. Why not? Because the maximum size allowed is 127. So this is forced by the type of the variable that you are uh, telling Java to create for you. So each one of these types uh, up to here, the double, they have different sizes. So for example, if we want to store an age, then you probably will say, okay, pretty interesting. I would just use byte because uh, there is no human that is older than 127 years. But the problem is there is a chance that might be. And one famous case about uh, what happened with like a wrong type was the Gangnam Style video on YouTube. So what happened is that they declared like a variable. Uh, I don't remember exactly the type, but they never expected the number of views to be bigger than what the variable allowed to have. So they actually had to change the, the variable type to accept a bigger number because the, if you go to the video, you'll see that we have more than 1 billion views there. So they were not expecting. And if you create a system and you tell, okay, we are going to store the age of people as byte. And for some reason, the medicine goes forward and we start living 130 years, then you have a problem in your system. So what you have to remember is byte, short, int, float, double. They are variables that store numeric values. Boolean is going to store true or false. Basically the word true and false. Some languages, they use numbers, zero to represent false, one to represent true. This is not uh, true for Java. Java, you have to use true or false. And character, char, you have to store, you can store only like single character or ASCII values. So let's stop for now. What you need to remember for these 
video is that you have eight primitive types. You don't have to memorize all of them. You are going to use and you are going to remember by default. And then you are going to always have the spacing memory with a specific type that you are going to define. You as developer are going to define the type of the spacing memory that you are going to allocate. And when you give a type, you are also telling how much space you are going to need from the operating system. And Java is going to kind of enforce this for you. So let's continue in the next video where we are going to create some uh, nice variables. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.